Hello everyone, I am Tasta and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War Pumping Iron event in which the Durgan Ironfall is added to the game. So let's get into that. As far as your troop, it comes in with a bunch of red, yellow arcanes. This is an epic, so it's pretty cheap at only 200 each, so if you need to stock up, now would be a great time. As far as your troop itself though, it is pretty bad. It's kind of under the generic, uh, very useless buffing troops that are basically never going to be used. This one's a little bit more usable, but probably still pretty much never going to be used. It gives a bunch of armor and some magic to all brown allies and then it creates a bunch of brown gems boosted by brown allies. Obviously uh, he's not a brown himself so he cannot get boost ratio off himself so the max amount of gems you could ever get is 13 which is an okay amount for uh, a 12 mana cast. However it doesn't feed uh, back into itself and the benefit that it's giving is pretty minuscule unless you had like a brown that has armor boost ratio and even then there's generally going to be better options to be using to boost their armor so overall not really something you're going to be doing. And uh, just going to be a pretty useless troop, nothing really too special off its traits either, it just has the standard dwarf trait and pretty much two useless ones. So overall, just something you're basically just going to use to upgrade the kingdom level of Kazale. And uh, that is about it, as far as the usability of the troop, you're basically never going to touch it. As far as extra stats this week, uh, pretty relevant, we do have 10% to all Kazale and 10% to all dwarves, meaning almost the entirety of the kingdom has 20% bonus, so 50% uh, um Dwarf related teams are pretty decent this week uh, since you can get 50% mana store on them, have 20% extra stats, and they're pretty useful for the World Lore event as well as for Thursday for the class event. And if you want to use this guy, even though he is useless, if you just want to plop him onto your PvP or Explorer team, you do get 400 additional gold um, every single time you do so. You could even do that into the uh, Ironhawk related teams and kind of farm a little bit extra gold from that in order to go do that with the Dust Devil and uh, get basically 400 more gold every single time. Uh, also, uh, we do have a Vault event this weekend, so combining that. That with Vault Event, uh, you can get a lot of loot this weekend. So that's starting on Friday and goes to standard Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, as it uh, always does. As far as the event key drop table this week, it is associated to KZL, since of course it is a KZL event. Actually, I'd even take the star. KZL does reach 19 star. I don't believe it has access to 20. Let me double check. Uh, no, nope, we're still missing a troop. So no 20, one off. That's very unfortunate, since we'd get obviously an extra stat once it reaches there. Uh, it's probably just a little bit of extra tribute chance. But anyways, as far as the event key drop table this week, uh, a lot of really good early to mid game stuff, uh, as well as stuff that's usable for this week. As far as uh, what's available, everything you see here is available in the event key drop table with the exception of the four Emperor are troops. Any of them that say Emperor are are not underneath this category. However, everything else you see here is available. Uh, the most noteworthy one that you might want to open keys for is, uh, well, there's technically two of them, the two legends. Uh, Gorgotha's a really good frontline tank, uh, still even to this day. 75% reduction. Uh, generally, you do use hero instead. However, in instances where you don't use hero or you're using hero for something else, like some kind of good weapon like rope dart or some other decent weapon, um, it is a good alternative to use Gorgotha. It's primarily used in skull spam teams where you don't have an attack reduction or web or, or a uh, entangle, I mean, to end up going with it uh, since you could just end up using the Gorgotha as your tank instead of needing some kind of other mechanic to basically make sure the enemy doesn't do skulls back to you. Aside from that, King Highforge, while very situationally used as he's not one of the better 50% mana starts, he is still used for two main things. One is Rune Priest. Uh, Rune Priest is the only hero class that has both Dispel and Barrier on Brown, while it's very rarely usable. Um, you would generally use it with High Forge when you do, which would give it the half mana start. It's very situational when you'd bring it out. However, it is the only hero class that has that unique combination, so occasionally it's used for that. And of course, it's going to be pretty useful for this War Lore event, as you're kind of restriction restricted to KZL, and almost this entire place is dwarfs. So being able to have a 50% mana start for it will make it a lot easier to uh, do, and um, is pretty substantial for this week. So if you don't end up getting it from the packs that you end up doing through the War Lore event, you might just want to open some event keys and just go for it, as it will save you a lot of times, not just on the weekly event, but also on Thursday if you're going to utilize it for the uh, class event. Aside from that, you can pick up quite a few nice low rarity things if you don't already have them. Like Apothecary is one of the best converters in the game. Having a cleanse on top of it. Uh, Dwarven Gate's a common that you likely have laying around. But it gives 5 mana to all other allies and barrier. Which is pretty substantial for a common. It's a really good effect actually. Uh, there's some good converts like Gimlet which is the green to brown. And uh, yeah, overall just a nice uh, little range of stuff like Rock Troll stuff like that. Uh, overall a lot of like low rarity stuff that's good that you might already have laying around. Uh, aside from that, you might get it just for the kingdom upgrade, uh, but uh, the mythic here is really bad, so you're generally not going to go super heavy into keys. You're likely just picking up a few things that you might want and then stopping with the keys. Uh, definitely a week that you might throw a small amount, but definitely not one that you would go all out on unless you just really wanted to upgrade KZL to uh, 10 plus stars. 
but uh, the Mythic there is pretty unusable, unfortunately. As far as stuff we got going on uh, throughout the week, we got Fel Roos tomorrow for the uh, Tuesday Faction event. Wednesday, we're getting the Valentine's Day pet, even though we had Valentine's Day yesterday. Of course, we had the Lunar New Year's pet uh, last week, so they um, had the Valentine's one this week instead of last week. So uh, you'll be able to get that this uh, Wednesday. For uh, Thursday, we have the class event for Rune Priest. Rune Priest, compared to all the other barrier on brown hero classes, super situational. But the fact that it has Dispel does make it pretty good against Submerge-related teams. And a few other instances where you might need the Dispel mechanic. And as I mentioned, this Friday, the main thing that we got going on this weekend is the... Um the Volky event. This will be the first Volky event since we had that very strong Ironhawk team and it didn't get nerfed. So, hey, we, we can still do it. It'll be interesting to see how that ends up panning out. Anyways, as far as Soul Forge, uh, we got a couple things over here. So, as far as the uh, Legends and uh, Mythics, Spring Imp is around. Uh, this will be available in. Uh, let's see, in Simp of Love right now for February and March. So as soon as April hits, this will be in the Glory Gem Guild and VIP chest drop table for April and May. However, if you want to get it now, it is available now. This will be the last time you'll be able to get it prior to April, May. So maybe uh, it's a okay entangling option. It's one of the few imps that actually isn't completely useless. Uh, useless. However, it's probably not worth going out of your way for. But it's still worth mentioning as it is one of those kind of troops that are only available at certain amount of times. Um, Carnex, I believe this is the first time since Carnex got buffed back in December that has been available in Soulforge. I would not really advise going out of your way to craft this. However, it is worth mentioning this is the first time he has been in Soulforge since his buff. So if you uh, do want to pick him up, he is here. Not really that advised, but um, worth mentioning nonetheless. Aside from that, if you're going to be picking up any of the uh, mythics that exist here, you probably want to go for Famine. Uh, famine, unfortunately, not associated to any kingdom. However, if you're looking for overall strength based on what's actually um, here uh, this week, uh, he definitely does so. He has a four times mana drain, which is one of the only few troops in the entire game that has a four times uh, mana drain. He also gets to do damage to a single target based on all that mana drained. It's particularly good against teams that don't have any amount of immune to mana drain. Uh, a little bit situational, as quite a few teams will have it, especially if they have like a bless or something like that they'll gain the ability to have it but in instances where you're not up against anything like that it's really good at not losing uh it's something that you'd probably use into a guild war week and some other things like that overall you don't use it for speed or anything like that so and the fact that it's not associated to the kingdom it's definitely one of the mythics you'd want to get way down the line like you'd probably want to have about half the mythics in the game before you get this however it's definitely a great utility option that you might want to consider as uh, very few things do mass mana drain. Obviously, one of the best things for this is uh, Great King, normally, uh, as far as the kind of things they can end up synergizing with. But uh, Famine's one of those things where you don't have to worry about what the team composition is. As long as they don't have a mean to mana drain, you can kind of um, get pretty good value from him. Uh, and aside from that, that's pretty much it. Most of the other things available this week are kind of average, not really stuff you'd really bother with for the most part. Plus, Amorak was available last week anyways. As far as weapon, don't forget to go get your Hammer of Kazale. I believe we're only six weapons short if you've been getting every single one of these weapons since that uh, weapon drop that they did like a year ago for every single kingdom. It still has not cycled through every kingdom yet. But we're getting close. There's only a few left. Uh, aside from that, um, nothing really too special to be crafting this week. Uh, you'd pretty much just ignore most of Soulforge uh, unless you wanted to pick up a weapon like uh, Doom sledge um for something like the event though i don't really feel like you need it there's other alternatives like war and peace which you get for free so overall i'd probably just skip on crafting uh weapons this week and um and uh, if you want to get something just get the camera hammer of kazel since this is the first time it's been available for not money um uh, for in-game currency but anyways Let's go over and end out with all of the teams. So, for the World Lore event... Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't actually go over the World Lore event, did I? <laughs> I kind of skipped over that and going over the other thing. Well, it's pretty straightforward this week. Uh, we didn't get any weapon with it, so no weapon to go over there. And as far as the event, you just do it in rarity order. So, we take the Element Grim, a Vinoxian Shadow Dragon are the exact same, and then you just go down to Epic, so on and so forth. You literally just do rarity order. should be perfectly fine. Um, it does give you slightly more points if you keep doing the same battle. So, for example, right here, if I see Epics, I might want to focus a little bit more on Van Barrick, since I'm seeing slightly more Van Barracks than the other one. So if you feel like you're seeing more Vinoxia than Shadow Dragon or more Shadow Dragon than Vinoxia, you might want to focus on those first. But basically, if you just go in rarity order, you'll be perfectly fine going from Mythic to Legend to Epic. And then if you see the Ultra Rares, doing the Ultra Rares. But uh, rarity order should be perfectly fine for the event. As far as uh, the restriction, it is, I believe I mentioned earlier, the Kzale restriction, which is one of the reasons why having a high... Um, a King uh, High Forge will be pretty beneficial, as he will get 50% mana start to all dwarves, and almost the entirety of KZL are dwarves. Not all of them, but a good majority of them. 
As far as weapons, the weapons are also restricted to KZL, unfortunately, so this does leave you a little bit more limited as to what you can actually use. You do have a magic bonus, so you can end up going just, say, War and Peace and getting a lot of value off of that. Gimlet feeds Brown into whatever your best Brown options are, which would also feed into uh, High Forge, since he's most likely going to be in your team, since the very high concentration of Dwarves. You then have Apothecary, which is an insanely good convert. Not only has it uh, does it have cleanse for all your allies, but also gets to convert to Brown. You normally want to make sure you give it a plus one that's unblocked, just so you could feed its mana up in two turns. So right here, we're feeding it with a plus one blue which will allow it to two turn assuming we surge once on one of the two uh, blues and you normally want to do that due to her 10 mana cost uh, you could do it for green too if you weren't blocking on green but we're just doing it with blue here since we are blocking specifically on green and it works out pretty good everything starts with half mana start and uh, we're just using rune priest because hey why not it's all dwarves you technically don't have to use war rune priest uh, since you're, the hero class is actually not restricted to it. However, it does still work pretty good with it. Uh, similarly, uh, War and Peace still a pretty good weapon. Unfortunately, it's not divisible by 5, so it's going to be a little bit clunky. you doing it with the cheap Dwarven Gate team. But uh, worst comes to worst, you can just use a bunch of Dwarven Gates, feed into War and Peace, and uh, just kind of win with that. You could feed into a different weapon. You could put literally any weapon you want there. You can also put your hero up to first slot if you want to utilize this high attack value, uh, because uh, Dwarven Gate does have a base attack of 0. Um... Of course, it still has attack value from all your other bonuses, but its actual base attack is zero, which means it has super high durability, but its damage output will be pretty low, and your hero is guaranteed to have a higher damage output than whatever your Dwarven Gate is currently at, regardless of what hero class you uh, end up choosing. But uh, basically, the premise would just be spam Dwarven Gates, you cast your weapon, rinse and repeat, and uh, the Dwarven Gates basically just constantly maintain uh, full mana. As far as the Fel Roost uh, faction, a couple things you could do. Uh, Fel Roost faction is almost entirely yellow for the first and final battle. If, if I'm not mistaken, the first battle is literally all yellow and the uh, last battle is three yellows with the legend i believe being the only thing that's not a yellow so finesse gets extremely good value here i've shown it with black mana goals however you could do pretty much any weapon that's 18 mana cost or lower uh since you can do divisible by six this is kind of like the dwarven gate premise except you have to have a storm and you just do yellow storm off of the uh the Stormcaller class, which has Perpetual Yellow Storm off of its final trait. Uh, you could also use Nimbus Bow here, which is the most ideal option. Uh, if you want to improve it but don't have Nimbus Bow, you could put any of the Doom weapons there that have uh, full AoE damage. doesn't even matter what color it is, as long as it doesn't deny yellow. And you just, just do that, get a nice big cast, and pretty much be good to go. But um, yeah, plenty of options. Either Doom Up in there, or really had Doom Up in one of the full AoE ones, or Nimbus Bow, or Black Manacle, or really any AoE weapon. Anyway, it should be perfectly fine. Obviously, Finesse's will be doing most of the damage that you need for the battles. Uh, whatever your weapon is, is just kind of help it along as far as its damage output, just to help speed it up. Other than that, as far as upscaling, if you want to go with upscaling team, you can end up running a High King Iron Guy here. You can do it with a Thrall, use the Curse off of Fiend Fire, and then just go into Leprechaun. It's all broken out pretty well. You do Archmages, so you get a bunch of purple. And you're pretty much good to go. Get the throw up, cast it, and you just pretty much auto win from there. And uh, be good to go. As far as pure faction, you'll literally just spam the Nocturnia. Nocturnia is by far the strongest thing of the four that you have to choose from. Uh, one other pretty nice thing about this is you pretty much have perpetual uh, survivability as far as what it ends up doing. Not only does it have a 50% chance to spawn a Fell Dragon Egg um, at full mana on its staff, but it also has a 20% chance to summon one every single time it casts. So you basically just spam Nocturnia. It'll gain its mana off of Enchant, assuming you're doing it for the Tuesday event tomorrow, of course. And uh, obviously you'd have Enchant at that point <laughs> if you went that far. So uh, they would naturally be getting their mana, even though they're fully blocked. And then you just hit them with a bunch of true damage. And even if one of them dies, it's going to most likely become an egg. And even if it doesn't become an egg, you're likely going to summon the egg off of one of the other ones it's going to cast. So essentially your Nocturnias die out. It becomes an egg. The egg then resummons, and then you're pretty much just good to go. So that's pretty much the premise of this and you just start with four nocturnia because your team's going to be completely different assuming none of them survive and you just want the really high damage output as the more nocturnias you have the more true damage you'll do and the quicker you'll kill out the enemy and lastly for the rune priest uh class uh, of course uh, you can end up running a pretty similar team actually for the uh, events this week since uh, they both have a relatively similar restriction however your restriction for the thursday event is both kzl plus dwarves whereas the ward lore event is only kzl specifically you can still use non-dwarves but specifically on Thursday for the class event, you will have both of the restrictions. But you're pretty much going to already be using dwarves anyway, so you pretty much just quick kill into whatever weapon you want. This one obviously doing it into black manacles, however you could do it into pretty much any weapon. Ideally one that can feed into brown. So you can end up using Duskbringer as well if you want to use that weapon, though. This one's just showing uh, black manacles, as it's much cheaper. And also, I might as well mention this, and uh, we'll probably post it below and be using it a lot this weekend. But um, of course, for this weekend, this will be the very first time we can end up using this amazing Ironhawk team for a Volt event. It's the absolute best thing that's going to be used for, and it will be usable for it. So, um, 
yeah, go get out those Iron Hawks this weekend, that's for sure. Uh, Vault Event, of course, really good to be farming and Explore, and whatever the quickest Explore kill team is. Obviously, the Rowan team still works pretty good, but any of the Dust Devil teams that we mentioned uh, the other week, still going to be really good with Iron Hawk as well, since they'll be able to go kill out at a super quick pace, pretty much near instantly. And, um, yeah, you'll be able to get a lot of gnomes, since gnomes are based on uh, more so how many battles you do, rather than how difficult the battle, battle is. So just constantly farming a level 1 Explore with instant and one shot will get you a lot of gnomes as well as vault keys and other very valuable loot so definitely a great idea to be farming it uh this weekend as well as any weekend when it ends up uh, occurring and now of course will be from friday saturday and sunday all the way until monday uh reset but anyways guys that'll wrap it up for now tonight we will be going over the new mythic um we actually have the uh, bigger pass this time around so i will be able to go over the mythic a whole week early uh, if i could click on it but uh, of course we have the campaign nine going on this week so we'll be going over all the campaign nine uh tasks as well as the uh, new mythic so that'll be quite a bit of fun we'll also have a video on it probably tomorrow or on uh wednesday kind of going over various teams for it uh too but uh, we'll be doing that tonight at 8 p.m uh, eastern standard time as far as getting those tasks down and basically first impressions on the uh mythic for this season but anyways guys i'll wrap it up for this video thank you all so much for watching if you still have any other uh questions feel free to leave it in the comment section below all of the teams mentioned in this video will be in the description if you want to go copy paste any of them thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys later goodbye everyone.